and elegance, either under saddle or in harness. The performance of the parkour should reflect the innate vitality and distinctly energetic character of the breed, enhanced and accentuated by systematic training programs designed to improve and perfect the horse's natural way of going through the use of bidding, shoeing, physical development, and showing techniques. In appearance, the Park Morgan should be as much a thing of beauty standing still as he is in motion. He must have quality, refinement, elegance, and definite Morgan character. All classes in this section are judged at least 40% on type and conformation, and championships are judged 50% on these qualifications. The remaining percentage includes the attributes of performance, presence, manners, and suitability. The order in which these points are listed in the class specifications indicates their relative importance for that particular class. There should be a difference in emphasis for different types of park classes. Performance and presence are important in open classes, and while this is also true for younger horses, more stress is placed on quality and promise in these classes. Manners and suitability are listed first in importance for ladies, amateur, and junior exhibitor classes. The performance of the Park Morgan should be collected, balanced, rhythmic, and precise at all times. While animation and presence are prerequisites, the Park Morgan should display a poetry of motion that is achieved by a combination of athletic ability and a willing attitude. At all gates, the Park Morgan should be airy, elastic, elegant, cadenced, and obedient. It is essential that the horse move without a forced appearance. The park trot is conceded to be the most important qualifying gait. It is a lofty diagonal two-beat gait with emphasis on enhanced natural action and precise cadence. The trot should be executed so that the flight of the foot approaches the arc of a circle. The action and stride should be of a height and length that can be performed with rapidity, elasticity, and precision, and continued consistently all the way around the ring. Considerable shoulder movement is desired and rear action should be balanced with the front. The feet should move lightly and land squarely. The overall graceful appearance of the horse in motion is more important than any single component, such as height of action alone, especially if the extreme action is at the expense of balance, cadence, and fluidity. The animated park walk is notably different from the relaxed, flat-footed walk of the pleasure horse. It is performed with great style, collection, elegance, and an airiness of motion. In its preferred form, however, it is still a true walk with four-beat cadence, although a two-beat cadence may be acceptable. It should be snappy, collected, animated, elastic, and on a straight line. Judges must give extra credit to horses that walk particularly well and should penalize but not necessarily disqualify, entries that do not walk at all. Entries must at all times display a complete acceptance of the regimentation of speed and at no time exceed the speed of a rapid four-beat walk. The canter of the park saddle horse should be smooth, collected, relatively slow, and straight on both leads. It should have a definite three-beat cadence. Correct leads are required both ways of the ring. The park harness horse is similar to the park saddle horse, 
Both are high-headed, bold, and airy-moving, and both look through the bridle with animation and presence. The ideal park harness horse has a longer stride, and his trot is stronger going than the park saddle horse. Extreme elegance, balance, precision, and cadence are required, and speed should not be confused with brilliance. In all park harness classes, horses execute an animated park walk and a park trot, which is a brilliant gait, animated, square, collected, and balanced, with emphasis on collection. The park trot should be bold but not fast. In ladies, amateur, and junior exhibitor classes, manners and suitability are primary performance considerations. In classes other than ladies, amateur, and junior exhibitor, drivers will also be asked to show your horse. At this command, the driver should show his horse to its best advantage. Some increase or decrease in speed is permitted, but not required, and excessive speed should be penalized. English Pleasure Section the show ring English pleasure horse is just as much a show horse as a park horse. The same excellence of type and presence are prerequisites for the pleasure horse. This implies that the horse has superior type, confirmation, attitude, and training for the specific qualifications of the class. All qualifying pleasure classes are to be judged 40% type and confirmation 60% on performance and other qualifications appropriate to the class. Championship classes have the same specifications except the percentages are 50-50. The English Pleasure Morgan must display an absolutely agreeable attitude. While his gait must be collected and balanced, he need not have as much brilliance, animation, and high action as the Park Morgan. Therefore, high action in and of itself must never be used as a criteria for selecting winners in English pleasure classes. The pleasure horse must exhibit impeccable manners with a bright, deliberate, willing performance on a light rein. This is especially important in junior exhibitors, ladies, and amateur classes where manners and suitability are considered paramount. In junior pleasure horse classes, minor mistakes receive lighter penalties, as quality and presence are the primary considerations. The walk of the pleasure horse should be flat-footed, free and rapid, elastic, ground covering with a four-beat cadence. The pleasure trot should be a pleasant, easy-going trot with elasticity and freedom of movement. There should be light contact with the mouth, slight flexion at the pole without evidence of undue restraint. The road trot should be a balanced trot, maintaining free forward impulsion with sufficient speed to be ground covering, but with collection enough to allow the horse to maintain the gait at speed for an extended period of time. Form should not be sacrificed for speed, and excessive speed at the expense of form or balance should be penalized. The canter should be slow, smooth, collected, straight on both leads, and with a definite three-beat cadence. Transition from one gait to another should be smooth and effortless at the will of the rider without anticipation on the part of the horse. All horses may be asked to back in any pleasure class. At all gates and in all classes, the English pleasure horse shall give the appearance that he enjoys the work he is doing and that he is indeed a pleasure to ride. Pleasure Driving Division 